So how, how do you hold space for other people that are trying to do new things? Yeah, it's funny that you would ask that question because one of the things we found at Imagine Chicago is that we very quickly, really within the year in which we did those interviews, became known as a kind of space for what's possible. Like we were just holding space for what was possible in the city without yet any particular structures to figure out how to realize that possibility. But we clearly had opened up space for something new to happen. And so one of the happy things that happened is that I would be sent a steady stream of people, often young people, often idealistic young people who were emerging from school or life experiences just passionate about something they wanted to see happen that was much too big a dream for other people to handle. And people had the good sense not to shut them down, but their own resistance to the, to the scope of those dreams was such that they didn't want to take responsibility for them either. So they sent them to me. And often I was sent people by, you know, referred by people who didn't really even know me, but knew of Imagine Chicago. And I would have a young person in my office just on fire with something that they could see. And I would listen to it and I would find myself, you know, I just, I love, I love dreamers who see things as possible because that combination of inspiration and action is what makes change happen. So I would listen to these dreams and I would find myself just like that. You know, every time they would say something, um, no matter what resistance, no, no matter what voices of resistance arose inside of me, which might be, uh, wow, that sounds big or wow, that sounds hard or wow, that sounds expensive or yeah. I mean, cause of course, you know, having been around, I also would feel those resistances. But what I would say instead was, wow, how would that happen? Wow, how would that happen? Wow, how would that happen? Always on the assumption, when I would speak back into that dream, I would say, hmm, you know, I've, I haven't seen that happen yet. But that's a really powerful idea. And, and it really makes me wonder how it could happen and who could be involved and what it would take and where this came from in you. And um, yeah, because, and, and I would often also say what I, what I said in an earlier video about um, assuming, making, proceeding from the assumption, not that the, the challenge was to talk people into a big idea, but to assume that a big idea already had a community gathering around it and it was a matter of locating the people rather than talking people into being on that team. And so I said, think of this as a treasure hunt where you're going out, you're holding up the idea or the question at the heart of the idea and just saying, who else cares about this? Who else sees what I can see? Who else is drawn to what is calling to be created here? And people will gather around. And when people respond with, you know, oh, that sounds impossible or no, I'm too busy or whatever, without missing a beat to just say, I'm, I, what you're doing is so important and I'm so glad you're doing that. I wonder if there's anyone else you know that you think might be interested in this. Because, uh, and really believing the assumption that the people who are needed to do the work will appear and that it's simply a matter of locating them. And so we became known for wow, how, instead of no, not. And that really was fuel for that possibility machine in the city.